Pasto's Biology, Biology 2115, Human Anatomy and Physiology 2. My email is jpasto at mgc.edu. My website is mgc.edu slash faculty slash jpasto. There's one other factor, a rather important factor, that affects end diastolic volume. And this is end systolic volume. How does end systolic volume affect end diastolic volume? What is end systolic volume? End systolic volume is the volume of blood in the ventricles at the end of systole. End systolic volume occurs slightly after the end of ventricular systole. It's the point at which the volume reaches its lowest. Let's say end systolic volume is around 80 milliliters. Let's say end diastolic volume is around 160 milliliters. If you increase end systolic volume, this would lead to an increase in end diastolic volume. Now how does that work? Well, let's look at a simple diagram of the heart. <clears throat> Here's the blood flowing into the heart. Here's the heart. And here's the exit flow from the heart. Let's assume that 80 milliliters enters the heart and 80 milliliters exits the heart. And let's assume the volume of blood in the heart at the end of systole is 80. If 80 enters the heart, the volume of blood at the end of diastole would be 160. Remember, blood enters the heart during diastole. The heart contracts once again. The blood exits the heart, and let's assume 80 milliliters leaves the heart. So, 80 enters. At the end of systole, the volume of blood is 80. Blood enters the heart during diastole. At the end of diastole, the volume of blood is 160. Contraction occurs once again. 80 milliliters leaves the heart, and the volume within the heart drops back down to 80. Notice that the heart is never empty. At the end of systole, the heart is still half full. Now, which value is end systolic volume? This one. Therefore, the other one is the end diastolic volume. Let's assume something happens to affect end systolic volume. For example, for some reason, less blood is ejected from the ventricles. Instead of 80 milliliters, let's say 60 milliliters is ejected. If that happens, how much blood remains at the end of systole? Not 80, but 100. Now, assuming the same volume of blood is entering the heart, that is the 80, now what would the end diastolic volume be? Well, you add 20 more to it, so instead of 160, the end diastolic volume is now 180. Now, of course, that means the heart is stretched a little more. And remember, Starling's Law means that the next contraction is stronger than the previous. You increase the stretch, you increase the force of contraction. And so in the very next contraction, the heart pumps more blood out than it did in the previous, and in one or two contractions, the blood flow into and out of the heart has been restored to normal. What are those factors that cause an increase in end 
systolic volume. Well, first of all, end systolic volume is due to a decrease in blood ejected from the ventricles. Obviously, if less blood leaves the ventricles, more blood remains in the ventricles at the end of systole. So we need to consider those factors that influence the blood ejected from the ventricles. One is arterial pressure. If arterial pressure increases, this decreases the difference in pressure between ventricles and arteries and leads to a decrease in blood ejected from the ventricles. The other factor is a decrease in the strength of systole. If the strength of systole decreases, less blood is ejected from the ventricles, the end systolic volume thereby is increased and the end diastolic volume is increased. Now you'll have to think about this scheme just a little bit, but as you follow through you will see that all of these factors as described lead to an increase in cardiac output which ultimately has an effect on blood pressure.